on the gift of prophecy. I believe in the blessing of the gift of the spirit of prophecy. The, the Holy Spirit gives you special, there's a special message. She still points us to the Lord. The gift of prophecy is about foretelling and foretelling. Welcome back, friends, to our I Believe series. I do pray and hope that you've been enjoying this wonderful journey that we are on. We are now are heading into the somewhat um, final stretch of the series, and we are all really excited to have you with us again. But before we do anything, come, let us all pray together. Our Father in heaven, we thank you so much for your grace and your mercy. We thank you for uh, the opportunity to have a guest here this, uh, this day, Father, and we, we also know that you are in our midst. Abide with us now, Lord, as we discuss this wonderful topic. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Pastor Don. We are back. <laughs> yes, and today, well, let's start with last time. Mm -hmm. Last time we were looking at spiritual gifts and ministries, mm -hmm. the gifts of the Holy Spirit that He has given to for the upbuilding of the church and for yes. ministry. And today we're looking at one of those gifts in particular, the gift of prophecy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that sounds interesting. And uh, 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 we have a very special lady with us today, Amen. Pastor Don. Uh, we've got Sister Ashalinga, mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah, for those that uh, do not know you, Sister Ashalinga, first of all, thank you for being here. Uh, I appreciate it, mm -hmm. we appreciate it, and I'm sure the viewers will also appreciate your ministry today. Thank you. It's an <laughs> honor. <laughs> <laughs> it's a blessing to have you here. Thank you. Uh, but maybe uh, I know you, I think I know you very well, I would like to think so. Mm -hmm. uh, you, We are here, we are uh, on this wonderful campus together at Helderberg College, uh, with our paths that have crossed many times. But maybe for the sake of our guests mm -hmm. that do not know you, maybe just tell us something about yourself, um, maybe even your Christian journey, or even how you got connected with the Silverleaf community. Okay, me and my Christian journey. <clears throat> I was born into an Adventist family. Okay. My great-grandfather left uh, Zimbabwe, then southern Rhodesia, yes. with uh, Anderson. Anderson right. left with uh, five young men going to Zambia to start um, Rusango Mission. Okay. So my great-grandfather was one of those that went with him. Wow. So that's how come we are found in Zambia and the rest of the family is in Zimbabwe. Mm. Okay. All yes. Right. So that is my rich heritage. Okay. So I grew up in the church. Okay. Um, I was active in, in the church. I grew up with Pathfinders, the youth. Back then, Pathfinders was called uh, JMV, Junior Missionary mm. Volunteer yes. Society. Yes. So, that is, so that gives away my age. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> so that was, I grew up like that. Um, but here is one thing. There is a danger for those of us that grow up in the church, because we just go through the motions. You know, it's life every day. You know, we go through the motions. So there was nothing dramatic, nothing okay. big about my life, you know, that I could say my life, God saved me from this. You know, you were just growing, it's life <laughs> as usual. Uh, but the, the sad reality is that you find that you are uh, spiritually dead. Oh, okay. because your concentration is in the doing. I am going to Pathfinders. Okay. I am going to church. I am a member of the choir. I sing in the choir. I participate in Become church activities. So, yes, yeah, so you, you, your concentration is on doing. Okay. 
mm. instead of being. Yeah, sure. okay. So that was my journey. Okay. You are in the church, but you are lost. You're doing you are all the right the, things. Yes, you're doing all yeah. the right things, but you have no relationship. So that was my journey. But God is kind. Mm. God mm. is kind in, in his own time. He raised up two people for me. I had a non-Adventist friend, and uh, she challenged my life. Yeah, her name is Mary. She went to Rosango Mission, you know, but remained a non-Adventist. She challenged my life in the area of reading the Bible. Okay. Yeah, she. I really wanted what she was. She had. Amen. So we started there with her, a life of um, reading the Bible, spending time, getting to understand, you know, and know the Lord personally. So that was uh, God's gift to me through Mary. But then there was also my grandmother. Okay. In, 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 in other circles, she would be called my great aunt. She okay. was uh, from my mother. She was my mother's aunt. Yeah, so she raised up for her. Now, my grandma also is not Adventist, but she has a very strong, uh, very powerful prayer ministry. Okay. And so one day she was sharing with me about her prayer ministry, you know, prayer life and all. And in my heart, I desired, I said, I want this. Wow. This I want. Because wow. I found myself wanting. Mm -hmm. I said, I'm baptized in the church. You know, you grow up, you are baptized, everything, but you don't have what other people seem to, be, to have. Mm. So I said, I want that. So that was the beginning of, oh, okay. yeah. So these two women changed the trajectory of my Christian life. Yeah. And what age were you at that time? Mm, I was in my early 30s. Okay. Yes. Wow. Yeah. So, so that was uh, my journey, journey, my Christian journey. So from then on, at least I can say, I have a personal relationship with my, my God. Wow. Things are different. And amen, here amen. I am. And how did I come to <laughs> Silverleaf? Wow. Uh, I'm married to a pastor. Amen. <laughs> we appreciate your husband too. Yes, thank you. So I'm married to a pastor. So we were called for, from our home country in 2006. Mm. Okay, so we left our home country in 2006, then we served at the division. After serving at the division, we went to serve in Angola. So while we were serving in Angola, we, he got a call to come and serve here as the director of the E.G. White Center here. Okay. So that's how we came in 2016. Okay. And when we came here, naturally, we want a home church. <laughs> But his predecessor, uh, Dr. Sokupa, pointed uh, Silverleaf to us. He told us of the three churches on the campus, mm -hmm. the one that is more home, uh, family oriented is Silverleaf. Mm -hmm. So we came over to Silverleaf the very first Sabbath we were here. We came over to, to Silverleaf. <laughs> In my mind, it was to visit. <laughs> but uh, my friend, had arrived. Okay. Oh, yes. Okay. So he, he he came in and his mind was made up. I tried coaxing him. No, let's let's find. Let's go around. Let's see. <laughs> he wasn't interested. He was happy he just here. yes, he was very happy here. So that is how we came to to Silverleaf. Yeah. So we've been here since 2016. No, thank and you and thank you for your ministry <laughs> and you. um uh your husband is also uh you know, a lecturer at the mm. college, and he's also one of our elders here. So we appreciate you and uh, your husband's ministry at, at the church as well, and the gifts that uh, God has blessed you with. So thank you very much. And even thinking of our discussion, conversation mm. today about the gift of prophecy, mm -hmm. it's a very relevant one, knowing that you're serving with your husband at the E.G. White Center, mm -hmm. which, <laughs> yeah, we'll get into yeah. some Different. more of okay. this topic, but mm. it's very, yeah, this is a manifestation of the gift of gift prophecy of that we are appreciating. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay. So maybe before we dive into our conversation, mm. let me read the fundamental belief statement sure. on the gift of prophecy. So number 18, the gift of prophecy statement reads, The scriptures testify that one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit is prophecy. This gift is an identifying mark of the remnant church, and we believe it was manifested in the ministry of Ellen G. White. 
Her writings speak with prophetic authority and provide comfort, guidance, instruction, and correction to the church. They also make clear that the Bible is the standard by which all teaching and experience must be tested. There are a number of accompanying scriptures that go with the fundamental belief statement. So, Sister Hachalinga, what do you believe about the gift of prophecy? What do I believe about <laughs> the gift of prophecy? I believe that the gift of prophecy is a spiritual gift, first and foremost. Mm -hmm. That this is a gift that comes from the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. himself. And that he gives it to the church to bless the church. Yeah, maybe I could uh, refer you to Ephesians sure. 4, verses 11 and uh, 12. Let's okay. We can go there. And we looked, this passage came up in our previous conversation on, okay. on spiritual gifts. It's a relevant yes. so, scripture. And it says, And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers mm -hmm. for the equipping of the saints, for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. So we find here Christ himself gives, you know, to the church for their equipping okay. this gift of, the, 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 of, of prophecy. Mm -hmm. But maybe one may be wondering, what, just what is the gift of prophecy? Mm -hmm. You know, I believe the gift of prophecy is twofold. Many of us, when we hear the gift of prophecy, the thing that first comes to mind is foretelling. Okay. Yes, yeah. predicting the future. <laughs> yes. And yet, that is not what yes. the, the gift of prophecy is all about. Mm -hmm. Yes, the gift of prophecy is about foretelling the mm -hmm. future. But it is also about foretelling, okay. preaching. Yes. So that is what the gift of prophecy is. So you, 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 the gift of prophecy is from the Holy Spirit where he allows you, or he actions or works on a person and that person can be given a word or about knowledge about the future mm -hmm. or empowerment for him to share a word from God. Okay, so what I'm getting at mm -hmm. is in what you have read is that yes, the Holy Spirit gives gifts as we've mm -hmm. discussed before um, gifts in equipping the church in whatever your area of you know the Lord will mm -hmm. uh, equip you with but the gift of prophecy what you're saying is that the the Holy Spirit give you special there's a special message that yes. will come upon you or at mm -hmm. least that the Holy Spirit will give you to give to the church yes. so we um, uh, all those other gifts of the spirit if you will uh, is there for equipping, like singing, playing the piano. Mm. Not that there's one more important than the mm. other, but this one specifically, mm -hmm. there's always a specific message um, that is that that's that's um, that goes together with this gift. So yes. I've got I've got it right. Yes, uh, there is a specific message because God addresses His people and meets them where they are. Okay. So where are you at that particular time? Okay. So God will give you a message at that time when we are now looking at the gift of forth telling. Okay. All right. And it's, it's a blessing to know that God is interested in what we are going through. And he, will, he, he still wants to communicate with us. True. True. And he doesn't communicate with us. I mean, think of Adam and Eve's privilege, face-to-face -face mm. communication mm. with God. You know, I think when Jesus came... That was, I mean, God in human flesh. But God is also throughout history since sin came into the world, God mm. has communicated through prophets. Yes. You know, he, it's not that he said, well, I'm not going to communicate at all we now mm -hmm. after sin, but he, he found another way to communicate through the prophets. Yes, yes. So the, the prophets have, what gift would the prophets have? The gift of prophecy. Mm -hmm. That spiritual gift they must yes. have. Yes. So, now, thinking of the gift of prophecy. So we see prophets in the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. We even see prophets in the New Testament. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, maybe we can talk more around, around that. Is there st are there still prophets in our day and age? You know, did, did it end with Jesus or the <laughs> church, early church? Yeah. 
I want to believe that the gift of prophecy still exists. Okay. Because as, as I described, the gift of prophecy is about foretelling and foretelling. So when you stand, like you stood yesterday before us, mm. and share God's word, what are you doing? You are prophesying. Mm -hmm. You are speaking God's word. Okay. And what went into you preparing the message mm, and giving the message. Mm -hmm. you, 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 you spent time mm. in prayer. You spent time in the word of God. And God gave you a message for his people. Okay. So when you come to preach, you are prophesying. Sure. So we can't say that the gift of prophecy died or is no longer there with us. Mm -hmm. The gift of prophecy is there to okay. date. Yes, and, and maybe what we may be looking at, like you read, you read uh, about the gift of prophecy also, uh, being upon, we believe uh, on Ellen White. Mm -hmm. You know, yes, the gift of prophecy was upon her and the church affirms her ministry mm -hmm. and we have been built up and edified by her ministry. So we can't say that uh, her gift no longer exists or it died with her. Yes, we may not hear the, f the future being foretold, but we still have the word of God still being given today. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, 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 Pastor Don, there's the messages, the everyday messages um, that's relevant here mm -hmm. for, for, for us mm -hmm. at Silver Leaf, at wherever you find yourself. Um, so, so, there's those messages that are given to the church, like on a daily basis as mm -hmm. well. Um, but what you've read earlier on in the, in the statement there, it says the gift is an identifying mark of the remnant church mm -hmm. and was manifested in the ministry of Ellen G. White, the Lord's messenger. Mm -hmm. so, um, so her ministry was not specifically, strictly speaking, to every day. It was to this remnant church, mm -hmm. uh, which we've covered in, in lesson 13 years. This remnant church uh, on a... On a Almost a universal basis. Yes. So her ministry spreads throughout that. Mm. If if I if I've got it right, her ministry is not limited to her time. Yes. Her ministry to date is still valuable. It is helping us even to date. Okay. Uh, so so she, no, carry on. <laughs> she's not different from the prophets that we found in the Bible. I mean, we when also are still I, referring yes, to their we messages. We still refer <laughs> to their messages. Ah, okay. When I go to the Bible, mm -hmm. I go into Isaiah, I go into Jeremiah, I read any of the prophets, their word still encourages me. Sure. Their word still corrects me. Mm -hmm. So even her, her word did not end then. It, through time, she still points us to the Lord. Okay. Just like the prophets of the Bible pointed us to God. Okay. So, mm, Thinking now of the end time context that we're living in, yes. mm. can we expect there to be the gift of prophecy being manifested amongst God's people? Mm. At this time, thinking of what Jesus, you know, when he, he warned um, that before he comes, there's going to be false prophets. Mm. Mm. So, I mean, if there weren't going to be true <laughs> prophets, surely he would have said, don't worry about prophecy. Yes. You know, but he didn't do that. He, mm. he warned against false prophets. You know, beware lest you be deceived. Yes. So, which by implication means he didn't say, yeah, by implication there's going to be true prophets as well because he didn't yes. say there wouldn't be. Mm. And maybe we can read Revelation 12, 17, mm. which is also, it's a description giving some identifying characteristics of God's end time people before mm. he returns, mm. his remnant people. I'll read it here in the New King James Version. And the dragon was enraged with the woman. That's the church, mm. the pure church. And he went, able to make war with the rest of her offspring who keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Mm. So here are two characteristics mentioned in verse 17. They keep the commandments of God and they have the testimony of Jesus yes. Christ. So, Sister Hajilinga, maybe you can help us to understand. So, they have the testimony of Jesus Christ. What, what is this testimony that they have? Of Jesus Christ. Yes. The testimony of Jesus Christ is the truth, the word of Jesus Christ. We remember or we, in the Bible we are told that 
Jesus was the word. Mm. He was there in the beginning mm. with God and he was the word. This testimony is the truthfulness of who Jesus is. Jesus Christ is God creator. Jesus Christ is God our redeemer. Jesus Christ is God mm. incarnate who came to die for us, took our place to die for us. And today, he is seated at the right hand of God the Father, interceding on our behalf. So that testimony. Okay. So it's a testimony. So if I hear what you're saying, one could understand it's a, it's a testimony of Jesus Christ. Yes. This is about Jesus. Yes. Yeah. Even the book of Revelation, the revelation of, of Jesus, Jesus Christ. Yes. Mm -hmm. So could it be understood both ways that it's a revelation of Jesus Christ? This mm. is this. Here, it's the testimony of Jesus. It's all about him. It's all mm. about him. He's our savior. Mm. Um, he's ministering as our high priest mm. in heaven. He's, it's all, he's the all-sufficient savior. Mm -hmm. Could we also say it's a testimony from Jesus? Yes. Mm -hmm. Like it's this, they have a testimony from Jesus. Mm. And yes. something that makes sense to me, who, who has the testimony? You know, like who shares the testimony the prophets share the testimony. Yes. Mm -hmm. Maybe we can read Revelation 19 verse 10 and also 22 verse 8 and 9. Because this, this phrase, the testimony of Jesus mm. Christ, is mentioned five Come times on. in the book of Revelation. Mm. If you read Revelation 1 verse 2, okay, maybe, sorry, I know I'm going back. <laughs> Let's go to, to Revelation 1 verse 2. Um, Let's read from verse 1 as well. It says here, The revelation of Jesus Christ, whom God gave him to show his servants, hmm. things which must shortly take place. And he sent and signified it by his angel to his servant John. Mm -hmm. okay? Think of Amos 3 verse 7, his servants, the prophets, yes. who bore witness to the word of God and to the testimony of Jesus Christ, to all things that he I saw. Okay, so, so John, as the servant of God, the prophet, he had the testimony of yes. Jesus Christ. Um, verse 9 says, similar thing, he was sent to Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. Okay, let's quickly go back to 19.10. Don't want to speak too much, but this, this really has stood out for me. Um, so John sees what he sees, and then he says, I fell at his feet to worship him. That's the angel who was revealing this testimony mm -hmm. from Jesus. But he said to me, see that you do not do that. I am your fellow servant and mm -hmm. of your brethren who have the testimony of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Worship God for the testimony, testimony of Jesus yes. is the spirit of prophecy. Mm -hmm. So we see the testimony of Jesus is linked to prophecy. Mm -hmm. Yes. Let's quickly go to 22 verse 8 and 9. And listen to how similar this sounds to 19 verse 10. Revelation 22 verse 8 and 9. Now I, John, saw and heard these things. And when I heard and saw, I fell down to worship the, before the feet of the angel who showed me these things. Then he said to me, see that you do not do that. Mm. For I am your fellow servant and of your brethren. Mm. What does it say? The prophets. The prophets. Yes. And of those who keep the words of this book, worship God. Mm. So here 19 verse 10 said, of your brethren who have the testimony of Jesus. Mm. And here it says, of your brethren, the prophets. Mm. So my connection there is this testimony of Jesus. So coming back to Revelation 12, 17, this identifying characteristic of the end time, God's end time people is they'll have the testimony of Jesus. Mm. And who has the testimony of Jesus? The prophets. the prophets. Yes. So this end time people of God, it's a prophetic movement. The gift of prophecy must be manifested mm. amongst them. Yeah. Well, what I, what I like about this, <clears throat> you know, uh, Jesus, when I think of prophets, I, I can't not think about John because he was John the Baptist, as we call him. Mm. His surname wasn't the Baptist. It was just <laughs> John who baptized people. Um, uh, when I think of prophets, you know, uh, the, Jesus' words ring in my ear and says, mm. there will never be a greater prophet than this, you know, uh, John, because he introduced, <coughs> the, you know, he was at the first advent of Christ. So we have, there's a prophet around the time of Christ's first advent, which 
has a huge work, makes straight the valleys and paths, right, of him who comes, the, the one who sandals, I can't, I'm not worthy to untie, right, John had that powerful message, mm. right, at the, around about the first advent of Christ. Beautiful. Coming to an, uh, uh, this remnant people, which we know we've discussed, is this end time people. It almost makes sense that there should be a prophet, a, a prophetic message, uh, someone that stands up at the second advent of Christ, mm. right? Uh, where, um, you know, I don't know if you can compete the two advents <laughs> next to each other, but the second one will bring this world to an end. Right, so the, the, the this Advent movement, this Advent message, right, uh, that, that John had, mm. right, so we can e almost expect that another um, John, uh, another John, right, um, whether and and this is maybe where, yeah, where the modern day prophet, if you want to call uh, Alan G. White, that fills that role, right, uh, but also to the larger body of this church. Okay, may I, may I add that while we did describe what a prophet does, mm. it may be necessary to just break it down. Who is a prophet? Okay. Who is a prophet? Okay. A prophet is somebody who speaks for God. Yes, mm. a spokesperson for God. A spokesperson yes. for God. Beautiful. Now, my husband describes it, uh, I've heard him several times describe it this way. He says, you know, priests represent the people to God. Okay. They mediate to God for the people, on behalf of the people. Prophets, on the other hand, hear from God wow. and speak to the people. So when we are looking at the gift of prophecy, or when we are looking at prophets, we are looking at people who hear from God. Yeah. Hmm. And they speak to the people. So when we say the gift of prophecy, does it still exist do we still have a people who are hearing from God today? Okay. We do. Yes. So the gift of prophecy is alive and well. Okay. Beautiful. I like that. <laughs> Between the priest and the prophet, mm. it makes mm. sense that this person is speaking on behalf, on of, behalf God. of God. Yes. Mm. So now in the Seventh-day Adventist church, we <clears throat> the church affirms, as you mentioned early on, that the gift of prophecy was manifested in the ministry of Ellen White. Mm. So, you know, maybe those who are watching um, don't, don't have much experience with, with Ellen White or maybe, maybe they haven't read what she has written, um, but I would encourage them to, to, to read and to, to see for themselves, like, what a blessing that this is, these messages are from God. Mm. But how can we... You know, you, you often see posters, prophet so-and-so, and this, you know, how can we be sure that this prophet is speaking from God? <laughs> from God. Because, okay. I mean, even in the Bible times, they had mm. that. So how, how can we be sure, how can okay. we test to know that, okay, <laughs> this is really from God? from God? Because what makes sense to me, if, if God is speaking mm. through this person, as a prophet, we need to take heed if it's from God. Yes. yes. So, but we need to be sure we mustn't go blindly. Yes. Uh, I can refer you to Deuteronomy 18. Okay. Let's go there. Verse uh, 22. Deuteronomy 18, verse 22. Deuteronomy 18, 22. Okay. This is one of the tests. Mm -hmm. Okay. For, for, for a prophet, for you to know if this prophet is speaking from the Lord or is of the Lord. Okay. It's here Moses is speaking and says, When a, fro a prophet speaks in the name of the Lord, if the thing does not happen or come to pass, mm -hmm. that is the thing which the Lord has not spoken. The, prof the prophet has spoken it presumptuously. You shall not be afraid of him. Okay. So, one of the tests is, is this prophet speaking, but whatever the prophet has spoken, is it true? Okay. Has it come to pass? Okay. So when you see the, the, the things taking place, yes. then you know, okay, this is, this is, this is from God. This is from God. Okay. This prophet is speaking. In agreement. In ag yes, in, in agreement, agreement with, 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 with the, oh, the, 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 the prophecy has come to be fulfilled. Okay. Yes. But then there is also another prophecy, I mean, another test, okay. 
Here is the thing. When we go in Acts, okay, we find that when Paul was preaching, mm -hmm. what did the Bereans do? They, they went really back. Unlike the Thessalonians, yes. Yeah, yes. they went back to... Shall we read that? Yes, please. Acts 17, That's verse Acts, 11. Yes, Acts 17, verse 11. Those Bereans did not wait yes, for they, anything. They, they, did, they did, did die themselves. <laughs> Yeah, so Acts uh, 17 verse 11 says, These were more fair-minded than those in Thessalonica, in that they received the word with all readiness and searched the scriptures daily to find out whether these things were so. Mm -hmm. So when a prophet speaks, is he speaking in alignment with what sure. is in the word of God? Sure, okay. Because when a prophet is speaking as sent from God, he is not going to depart from the word of God. God and his word are one. And it makes sense that, I mean, we know all scripture is given by inspiration of mm -hmm. God. Yes. Mm -hmm. we, we know that, you know, God has inspired the prophets. They were moved by the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. to write. And what we've got here, everything needs to be tested by the scriptures. Yes. Mm -hmm. So that's a blessing to have the Bible that we can yes. go back like the Bereans here. Mm -hmm. To see, okay, to find out whether these things were so. Well, so so is what the, this prophet mm -hmm. saying true? Yes. Yes. Is it in the Bible? Is it aligning with the Word of God? I think that is that is a powerful test right there. Mm. The agreement with the Bible and the accuracy yes. of the prediction. Mm. How true is it that what you have said is it happening? Mm. And um, and I'm sure there there are there are but more that we can we can think about. Mm. Um, Maybe can we maybe consider the acknowledgement of Christ's incarnation as well, acknowledging that Christ yes. has come right in as the, the Messiah mm. in the flesh. Mm. If the spirit, uh, if the prophet doesn't recognize that, I think um, there's no light in them, mm. as mm. as Jesus <laughs> yes. has said. There's no light, light. in them, and um, you know. Also, when I look at maybe uh, another thing is the role of the prophet's ministry. You know, there's something, maybe just off topic, but, um, you know, oftentimes I hear this, this uh, almost an attack against, you know, the ministry that uh, was portrayed in, uh, you know, Ellen White, mm. you know. Um, and when I think of this, and I hear people say, yeah, she never said she was a prophet. But then I read the Bible, and I can't find any of the other prophets that said, I am a prophet. Like the, the outright, like in a defensive hmm. uh, mode, said, I'm prophet, right? Um, the, 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 it wasn't there. It, it was always the man of God yes. or the prophet is over hmm. there or they sometimes call them the seer, yes. right? Because, yes. you know, they, they saw hmm. right, uh, what was to happen. And when I also, the, the other thing is also these prophets were attacked, man. They were chased by queens. You remember uh, Elijah? <laughs> Man, you, you got chased into a cave. Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, and I think Suffer some of them got yeah. chopped in half mm. and sword in, you know. It must take huge courage being a prophet to, yes. to speak yes. on behalf of God. Mm. People don't always want to hear what God wants to yeah. say. <laughs> you know, and um, I'm, I'm just curious in the thinking of the prophets. Um, I wouldn't say that is an identifying mark of uh, a prophet that, one has been persecuted, persecuted, you know, because you can be persecuted for doing wrong stuff also. <laughs> but uh, it's just very interesting for mm. me, the some sort of similarity that we find in the biblical prophets yeah. and the, uh, the gift that uh, was portrayed in Ellen White's ministry. Yeah. So maybe we can touch on one or two more tests of a prophet um, before we move on. I'm also thinking, I think, Pastor Ezra, you mentioned this one, 1 John 4, verse 1 and 2 and 3, also talks about many false prophets have gone into the right. world, and therefore we need to test, mm -hmm. lest we be deceived. Mm -hmm. 1 John 4, verse 1 to 3. Beloved, mm -hmm. do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits, mm -hmm. whether they are of God. Because many false prophets have gone into, out into the world. Mm -hmm. By this you know the Spirit of God. So mm. we want to know the, who is the prophet who, who, is, who has the Spirit of, of God. God. This is yes. the true prophet. Mm -hmm. 
By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. Mm. And every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And, that it, and this is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard was coming and is now already in the world. So, could we say that the prophet's teaching about Christ needs to be biblical, true? I mean, we've already said it needs to be in agreement with the Bible. Mm. Um, and isn't, I'm just thinking here that, why is this one so important? Is it perhaps because the, the very center, I mean, Jesus himself said, John 5, 38 to 40, you know, search the scriptures for in them you think you have eternal life, but they, they, they which the testify, testify of me, of mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. you do not come to me to have mm -hmm. life. So Jesus is really the, the everything's center point. of everything. Yes. Yeah. It's all about mm. revealing Jesus. Yes. yes. And also thinking of the fruit you know, by their fruits, you shall know mm. them. You shall know them. Mm. Trying to think of where that is. Um, as, you, as you're speaking, you know, I'm, I'm thinking now that what other way, you know, at least now we know that Ellen White is, has passed uh, early 19th century. Uh, um, but the, her, how, do you, how can we still test that? We look at books like Steps to Christ. Mm. Man, I, I know it's a <laughs> personal <laughs> book for you, <laughs> for all of us, you know. But when I look at um, books of the, like Desire of Ages, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. pointing to Christ, is this, yes. uh, you know, that is directly. I think all her works, yeah. uh, uh, if you, you can give me more stats, you know, on the, the 80 books she read, the extra 60,000 pages she wrote, um, you know. But if you have to just, I was, re I was reading a, a letter the other day she wrote, uh, to a son, you know, uh, she, and, and she was encouraging her son, stay close to Jesus. Yes. Mm. I mean, it's a, a diary, you know, a family made it available for us to read now. And these intimate moments that we really expose as a person, and even there, stay close to Jesus. Mm. She writes to Edson, uh, one of her sons. And, um, you know, it really speaks to that thrust that she yes. had, wanting people to come to a... Uh, uh, a better understanding of, of Jesus. And, and on this, this one last thing on this topic, we, at, at, at one of the churches we were at, um, they had the preacher called up, and a, a university professor. And I was thinking, what's this preacher doing? <laughs> you know, and uh, he, was, he, was, he wasn't, he came up with a gene. I still remember, like a, a gene and very, he wasn't, you know, church dressed. And he wasn't an Adventist. He was, and she called, the preacher called up, this professor, uh, one of our top universities in Cape Town, and uh, asked, hey man, just share what you've experienced. He said he's never read a, uh, a book or re writings that point someone to mm. Jesus like Alan White. Mm. Right? So, um, and, and I think it's important for us because there's often a misconception about, especially Alan White's writings mm. in a ministry, and it's almost like, She's one-sided. But yeah, outside people are coming in and saying, man, we've never read someone that pointed you to Jesus like this. Yeah. And, and that's my encouragement. Maybe we'll get more of it later. <laughs> but don't take somebody else's word for it. Yes. Go read yourself. yourself. Yeah. Because, you know, I'm sure maybe other prophets <laughs> from old had that as well. <laughs> we've got the internet. They wouldn't have had that. Yeah. But, you know, when you search on the internet, you get all sorts of things. Mm -hmm. um, some helpful, some not. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I think for me, the test is, you know, like, like the Bereans, receive the word eagerly, but go test and see for yourself. Yes. You know, read what she has written and see how, how it will draw you closer to Jesus and be in harmony with the Bible. Mm -hmm. She actually says her writings are in lesser light. Yes. So she, even in her writings, she's, she's pointing, pointing and lifting up oh, the man. Bible. Yeah. And that's even in our fundamental belief. Exactly. So she herself wasn't saying, no, just listen to me, leave no. them. She kept pointing people back to the Amen. Bible. It's but just a guide to the Bible. Yes. It's a guide to the Bible. Yes. Um, you know, and again, we, we recognize that um, whenever... 
there, there, there's something that's said or written. The Bible is always final. whatever. It, it's the final word, all right? And uh, there's always a reference. Mm. It's at least where the thought is drawn out of yes. a portion of Scripture yes. or, or the book, mm. if you will. And that's my, been my experience. For example, reading The Desire of Ages, you know, I like the addition of the Desire of Ages. I'm not sure if they all have it, but they say based on, you know, Matthew so and so, mm -hmm. Luke so and so, mm -hmm. John so and so. Yes. And if you go read, so what I'll do is I'll read that from the scripture first, and then you read what she's written. And maybe I wouldn't have picked it up before, but after it's, when I read from that chapter in the Desire of Ages, I say, oh, I see where she gets this. Mm -hmm. It's not, or, so that often happens. And other times, I think, oh, that's such a, that's an interesting point. And then, but I, I haven't seen it for myself in the Bible. Then later on, as I'm reading something else in the Bible, I'm like, ah, oh, that's where she gets it. <laughs> it's like right there. It's from the Bible. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, but there's also things that's, um, that I don't want to say not in the Bible, but that's added and complements what we read as well. Yes. In harmony with right? the Bible. But it's still in harmony. It doesn't speak against all right, but it complements, and again, those tests, um, those does the predictions come through? So far, you know, her writings haven't failed yet. They are yet to fail. Yet. They are yet to fail. <laughs> Actually, here's what I have discovered: there are times you read the Bible, and there are some gaps. You know, there's uh, you, it's just information that you are reading mm. there, but they, you know, there's some you feel like. <laughs> What happened? You yeah. know, uh, it's like the, the author the of, of yes, yes. Mm. But then when you go to 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 read what she has written, oh my God, mm. your eyes just open up, mm. you know, and you get to appreciate the Bible more because it becomes clearer. Because then you realize, oh, okay, so this is what the Lord is trying to communicate to mm. me. Mm. So there is a gift of prophecy manifest. Why? Because she heard from the Lord, inspired, mm -hmm. under inspiration, and she s simplifies it. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know, so so I find that her writings um, simplify the Bible for me. Okay, yeah. I like for those who this is an older edition, Seventh Day Adventists believe here. Mm -hmm. um, there's a, a part there, the Spirit of Prophecy in the Bible, a helpful section on different points, mm -hmm. um, as you mentioned. Like, how do we relate to this gift of prophecy that was manifested through um, in the ministry of mm -hmm. Ellen White? So the writing she has, how do we relate that to the Bible? And as it says here, the Bible is the supreme standard mm. by which everything should be tested. Mm -hmm. And we've it already said that. And her writings act as a guide mm. to the Bible, yes. a guide in understanding the Bible. I like this one, a guide to apply mm. Bible principles. Um. You know, and what I appreciate, if, if the church makes use of this wonderful gift that God has seen it fit to, to provide to us at our mm -hmm. time mm -hmm. in earth's history, you know, as if we are reading what God has provided for us, it will also help us very practically, like it's, her, her counsel is very practical, practical. Mm -hmm. you know, and you can see it's based on biblical principles, mm -hmm. but Practical advice yes. for daily life mm. yes. and for how to lead the church. That could already unite us yes. as we follow that. Mm. Yes. I've, I've, I've often seen, you know, reading the Bible, I've often seen these prophets. It's, it's very, sometimes it's very unpopular messages that's given also. Mm -hmm. All right. Repent. You brood of vipers, <laughs> John the Baptist says, who warned you to, to flee, flee from, from the wrath of come. God that's to come? <laughs> Repent. Like he was talking to the religious <laughs> leaders, man. <laughs> so, you know, that, that, that sometimes it's messages that takes you around the arm and uh, just encourages you mm -hmm. to live closer. But there's times, as the Bible, mm -hmm. you know, um, that, that those messages are, hey, Time He's for a straight correct system, yeah, yes, and, yes. And, you know, and that, but that balance that we find, you know, and um, but also, um, I just want to read the preamble to what you were reading there. The writings of Ellen White are not a substitute for scripture, yes, mm. that's important. They cannot be placed on the same level. Mm -hmm. This is page 258 in Adventist, uh, Seventh day Adventist belief. The holy scriptures stand alone, 
I like to say it and then say it again. <laughs> the unique standard by which her and all other writings must be judged and to which they must be subjects, the scriptures mm. yes. and scriptures alone. So, you know, as as we go through our lives, Sister Hashalinga, um, maybe there's somebody that, that struggles to understand where does this, why do we need Alan White? Um, do we need Alan White? Or at least not Alan White, we don't, but her, the gift that was uh, put, you know, put that was her. placed on her, the gift, and sh uh, um, we now have the writings that's left. Um, but these writings, this gift of prophecy, um, where does it fit into my personal life? Do I, is there need for it in my personal life? I'm, I'll be okay, won't I, if I live without it? But what do you say to a person, maybe as, a, as we land this plane, as we close off this message, what do we say to a person like that, that has that struggle, that um, don't maybe understand, or, or maybe somebody that's never read? How do we get, get uh, somebody to, to that point of, of at least accepting and reading? Okay. Um, I think the first challenge is that we need to take out of our minds what prophecy is. Okay. Let's put aside the idea that prophecy is only about foretelling the future. Mm -hmm. Let us be reminded of the fact that prophecy is about speaking the word of God. Okay. So when, we are, when you are reading scripture or when you sit under a pastor mm. who is teaching you or showing, giving you the word of God. He is prophesying. So don't just go and look for Ellen White. But that person has spent time in the closet mm. with God. Mm -hmm. And God has laid a message on that person's heart. Uh, First Thessalonians 5, I think if I'm not mistaken. Um, First Thessalonians uh, Five, verses um, nineteen and twenty, and tw actually, let me read yeah. nineteen through to twenty-one. It says, "Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise prophecies. Test all things. Hold fast to what that which is good." Right? Do not despise mm. prophecies. Do not quench the spirit. Sometimes we are very doubtful. We are doubtful not because we, we don't know the truth. We choose not, just not to believe. We listen to too many people. So here the word of God is cautioning us not to quench the spirit of God, not to despise the, the prophecies, the utterances that have been given. Our challenge is that we despise the utterances that are being made. I do know, uh, sadly, of some members of, of our, very, our very church who despise the ministry of Ellen White. They don't want to, to hear or to have anything to do with, uh, with her or with her ministry. But let us not forget that she is working under the unction of the ministry, Holy Spirit. Okay. When a pastor stands here to preach, he is working under the action of the Holy Spirit. So when you despise the utterances that that person is giving, you are not despising the, the mm. utterances. You are actually despising the Spirit of God, wow. the one who sent the person. Wow. So we should be very careful that uh, when we do that, we are not despising and we are not quenching the Spirit of God. Mm -hmm. Yes, be open. Why don't you give God a chance? You know, here is, is, is something that is, is, is very critical about the ministry of, 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 of prophecy. These people are not preaching of themselves. They are not talking mm. of themselves. A prophet is a person who sits and listens to God. Mm, okay. Is a person who has a personal connection with God. God is not just going to speak and you hear from the blue just like that. Mm. You have to be a person who spends time with God in, in, in his word and you are, you, you are reading his word and you, you talk, you know, you converse with God. You hold dialogue with your God so that when he, spe when he speaks to you, you know. So when I say, do not despise, don't despise any utterance of God. 
give him a chance. What is God saying to you in your private time? Okay, so let's say you don't believe anyone, but do you have a personal relationship with God yourself? Okay. How much time are you personally spending in your quiet time, in, in your devotional time with God? That is the basis mm. of everything. Surely, if you cannot trust anyone who speaks the word of God, if you think they are lying to you, ask God. Yourself, in your, take time, inquire of the Lord. When you go before the Lord with a teachable spirit, you are inquiring genuinely. There's definitely no way that the Lord is not going to answer you. And when we go back to the word of God, mm. like the Bereans say, mm. you know, we've heard. Yeah. And I think when one goes with the right attitude, mm. desiring to obey whatever God wants to say, I think that's when God can teach you. Yes. Because you're open, you mm -hmm. want to know, yes. Lord, whatever your will, show me. Mm. Mm. So, just wanted to maybe touch on this briefly. Is, okay. is there a difference between a preacher and the prophet? Because I know in the biblical sense, the word prophecy is not always, like you're saying, foretelling the mm. future. It's also preaching. Yes. You know, um, I mean, personally, I see myself different from, I, I don't see myself as a prophet, <laughs> even though I'm a preacher. Yes. Um, but I also do, at the same time, want to be used by the Holy Spirit. I don't mm -hmm. want to just be doing my own thing. I also mm -hmm. want to hear, you know, make sure what I'm preaching is from God's mm -hmm. Word. Um, so, yeah, is there, a, is there a difference? I'm just thinking of Ephesians 4, you know, where there's teachers, pr Apostles. prophets, That's... evangelists. Mm -hmm. So, um, hmm. a preacher. And, so you want the difference between a preacher and uh, and the. Uh, well, I'm just thinking like if there I, is in the a difference between the two. Yeah. So, so the way I see the ministry mm. of Ellen White, for mm -hmm. example, I don't see myself. I'm just speaking personally now. <laughs> I don't see myself. In the same category, category, let me mm. say the same ministry. Mm. Even though we are all working towards the same goal, preparing people for the second coming mm. of Jesus. But yeah, so I'm just seeing a distinction. Thought, let we can talk around that a little bit. Okay, but to both me, need to. We need to heed both yes. because if, if God is speaking, we need to. We need them both in, in the in the church of God. Okay, it depends, uh, Pastor, your vision. Because yes, your vision I, may be saying uh, prophet, evangelists, and pastors, and teachers. Pastors well, and teachers, some yeah. will say, and uh, preachers, you know, your preachers, you know. But for me, the difference there is in the prophet does not just foretell. The prophet is also given the gift to uh, foretell. Okay, I see what you're saying. So, the, so the, the, the gift of prophecy is not just about preaching or giving the word of God to edify or to, to, to strengthen the people. Just it includes for, that, but it's not limited to it's that. It's not limited yes, to that. Okay. okay, when we look at, um, let's look at a biblical prophet, for, for example. Let's look at um, Isaiah or Jeremiah. When there were injustices happening, mm. What did they do? Yes, they spoke okay. to the injustices. Mm. Mm. So they were giving a word for that, that context yes. that was there. But when the word had, I mean, when the Lord had a word for them for the future, they spoke okay. a word for the future. That's a prophet. Okay. Seventy years you'll be exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So his prophet. So the, the prophet does both. That the makes preacher sense. will now forth tell. No, okay. thank you. That's that's <laughs> helpful. <laughs> So, so ma'am, as we, as we close off, um, you know, how is, how is this for you personally? How has the gift of prophecy, the ministry of Ellen White, her writings been meaningful, relevant for you? And how have you sought to apply this practically in your own experience? Like we can learn from that as we hear your, your experience. How has it been for me? I will say that... Uh, for me, it is, it is more straightforward. Okay. I have come to realize that uh, without the gift of prophecy, we would be nowhere. It's the gift of prophecy that 
God has given us that tells us where we are going. Mm. God used his men and women to give a word to show us mm. our future. Mm. So when I go to the Bible or when I read Ellen White's writings, I am strengthened. So how do I put it? I read. <laughs> I read the, the word of God. I read also from her writings. It's so like I was saying that there are some of her writings that I will read and my, my, my eyes just open like, oh, okay. So this is what this means. This is what this means. Yes. So it, it, it gives me an the appreciation. <laughs> yes, things are, are coming together. Like uh, uh, we said that sometimes the prophets or the gift of prophecy speaks to our current situation. And so we find like in, in Micah, Micah says, yeah. he has shown you, oh man, what you should do, yeah. you know, mm. but to do justly. You know, to have mercy, to walk humbly with your God. Mm. All those are admonitions that I take to heart. But then what do I learn from these prophets? I have learned that it is very, very important to have a personal relationship with my God, to spend time mm. with my God, that it is very important for me as a Christian to know God for myself, mm. to hear God for myself, I have seen that there is nothing special. There was, you know, God did not say, the, only up until this time, or the, I'll never speak to my people. No. Through this gift, I have come to realize that God desires to speak to me. Amen. That's why he sent it. Yes. So he yes. sent his word because he desires mm. to speak to me. He is open. He, he is an open invitation to me. So for me, that is how I found the gift of prophecy to be very helpful. It has opened my eyes to the reality that God is a father who wants me in his, in his camp and beautiful. in his company. I think that's a, a beautiful way to end off mm -hmm. with an appreciation mm -hmm. for the gift of prophecy that God has manifested this gift throughout history and even in our time through the ministry of Ellen White because he wants to communicate with us. Mm. He wants to speak to us. Yes. So may we make it personal and allow him, spend that time with him to make, allow him to speak. Mm. May we receive his word, receive his messages, mm. because it's, I mean, if God has seen fit to send it to us, yeah. he knows there's a blessing, there's a benefit, yes. there's something important that he mm -hmm. wants to communicate. Mm -hmm. yeah. So may we really take time to appreciate it as you've done and also grow there by and allow God to lead us in the times we're living in. No, well, thank you so much, Sister Shalinga, Pastor Don. It was good sitting around this wonderful table again. And uh, I know that there's a, a somebody had to, somebody will listen to this. Somebody needs to experience what we spoke about, mm -hmm. you know, because it's really an experience mm -hmm. to get excited over a portion that you read. 10,000 times already, whatever the amount has been, and I get excited to go, what? I never saw this, yeah. like you said. So, may that excitement build mm. in our lives, and uh, I pray that it will be the same for our listeners as well. So, thank you very much, uh, listeners. I do pray that you had a wonderful time with us today, but before we end, we're going to allow uh, Sister Shalinga just to pray for us as we end the session. Okay. Shall we pray? Father God, we thank you for this time that we had together to talk about the gift that you have given to the church, the gift of prophecy. We thank you, Heavenly Father, that you are true to your word. You have not left us as orphans. You've given us your Holy Spirit, and he is present. How we pray, Heavenly Father, that by your grace, and by his power, we may yield ourselves more and more to you. May you remove any impediments and barriers that hinder us from allowing you to work in our lives. We pray, Spirit of the living God, that you will make our hearts your home. Live in our hearts and take full control because we ask and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. God bless you and we all see you next time. Thank you, friends. Thank you for joining us. And I'm sure you've got questions or you're in comments. Please 
feel free to send an email to the email below or reach out to us on any of our social media outlets. We are so, we are so glad to have you interact with us and we are praying for you as you discover what you believe.